Dear Joseph, here we are again, coming to reflect upon you and to talk with you during this holy year dedicated to you. One of our outstanding images of you is that of you in the Holy Family. On a human level, you are the head of the family, the family that was holy by its nature and holy because of its success in living as God wanted you to do. I suppose that in the beginning, whether it was in Bethlehem, Jerusalem, Egypt or Nazareth, it was surely unclear what would make you holy or special. And yet, throughout the centuries, even up to our own times, we have remembered you with so much love. What was it that made you so appealing and attractive to us? I guess that a major lesson that you revealed to us is that you had a wonderful ability to hear the word, God's word, no matter how or where it came to you. In this way, you were so like Mary, whom we are told always listen to God's word with devotion and in the depth of her hearts. You trusted that same word of God, no matter how it came to you, when or where it came. You understood when the word was addressed to you, you did what it told you, and you always acted upon them, like Mary, your wife. You bravely and with courage did whatever came. You dealt with the gossip that came from your own town when you took Mary home to be your wife, despite her being pregnant in a strange way. You reverently cared for her and lovingly looked after her while she was pregnant. But at the same time, I've often wondered, Joseph, why did you let her go off on her own into the hilly country to visit her cousin Elizabeth? Were you not worried? Of course, I'm sure her sense of security and that of her child was of enormous concern to you. But you trusted. When you were told to go to Bethlehem to be counted unexpectedly, how hard you you worked to find a place for you all to stay, for Mary to have her child. This reminds me of how in our own day, so many young people are in the similar situation to the situation you were in then. They too with young families are searching for a place to live happily and peacefully. That was a hard and trying moment for you, obviously, but it was not the only one. Shortly afterwards, we know that there were wicked rumors going around in Bethlehem where the king, the local leader, was trying to find out where your child was to be born because he considered the child a threat to himself. Once again, you were told that you had to go into exile for the safety of your holy family. You became emigrants. Joseph, when I think of this story of the family that you were in charge of, I think of the many young people who are living in our time and in our country and in our surroundings. They too are emigrants like you. They've had to leave their homes. They've had to come here to a place of strangeness. And then, at the end of a long time, when that bad king had died, you got the word again, you can come home. This experience, Joseph, reminds me of the many parents in our time 
who are, for one reason or another, losing their own children. It moves me to think of the time you went with Mary to register in Jerusalem and in the excitement of the crowds, you lost Jesus. Jesus got lost. You didn't know where he was. You were almost home again when suddenly you realized he wasn't with you. And what did you do? You had to turn around and walk all the way back again to Jerusalem. You searched and you found him. It reminds me, Joseph, of the great number of people today for who, for one reason or another, they either lose their parents, abandon their parents, or it reminds me of all the people who lose contact with Jesus, your son. Joseph, I ask you, give them a thought, say a word for them, help them to rediscover Jesus, your son, and to work until they find each other. Do, an, do not allow children to be lost, but let us search and find them.